వచ్చి మనకి మనకి కాపాడేది ఈయన అది వినయ్ సో సెక్రటరీ ఆఫ్ ది బ్రాంచ్ సి అనిల్ బ్రహ్మపాల్ అండ్ టుడేస్ రిసోర్సెస్ పర్సన్ సిఏ వినయ్ గాంధీ ఫ్రమ్ అవర్ ఓన్ బ్రాంచ్ పాస్ చైర్మన్ ఆఫ్ ది బ్రాంచ్ ఎంసీ మెంబర్స్ సీనియర్ ప్రొఫెషనల్ కొలీగ్స్ అండ్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఐ వెల్కమ్ యూ ఆల్ ఫర్ టుడేస్ దిస్ మీటింగ్ సో really i am very very grateful to vinay gandhi why because within a short notice short notice means he will take 15 minutes notice for coming to our rescue it's not ordinary thing it is very great thing nijanga aapad bandulu aapad mukulu ekkada unnaro teliyadu kani manaki edugulu ne manaki evadu pratyeksham ayyadu so at the day my dear friends that you all know that there's a goods and service tax is a system where one person determines the tax and pay the tax by self assessment when the tax is paid by doing self assessment there is likely to be a chance that the tax may not be paid without any malice intention or there may be also a chance that the ssc ssc may pay the tax short intentionally or unintentionally under such circumstances there are some provisions which are followed by the authority to recover these taxes which are short paid by ssc intentionally or without intention under the chapter 15 from section 73 to section 84 of the central goods and service taxes act 2017 these provisions relate to demand and recovery under the goods and service tax has been discussed the process of recovery of the gst starts with the issuance of show cause notice and end up with the adjudication proceedings central goods and service tax act 2017 authorizes the proper officers to demand and determine the amounts because a tax which is not paid section 73 and 74 a tax which is short paid section 73 and 74 a tax which is erroneously refunded section 73 and 74 a wrongly avoided input tax credit are wrongly utilized the input tax credit a wrongly utilized input tax credit under section 7374 a tax which is collected but not paid a tax which is collected beneath the wrong head so what is demand and recurrent gst demand means the wish or desire of a consumer to get or acquire goods or services when there will be more demand the market will flourish it is an action that leads to the growth of the economy the government imposes a tax on every goods and service every person is liable to pay the tax to the government and when they purchase uh, when they purchase the goods when a person fails to abide with his duty the government has to recover the tax from the defaulter tax is the basic source for the government to run the economy of the country failing which the causes the economic imbalances the government adopts strict measures to recover the tax from various defaulters because first of all determination of tax general provisions related to determination of tax tax collected but not paid to the government tax wrongfully collected and paid intimation of the recovery proceedings recovery of tax payments of the tax and other amounts in installment transfer of property to be void in certain cases tax to be the first charge on property and a provisional attachment continuation of violation of the certain recovery proceeding under section 84 all these matters will be discussed by today's emergency resource persons see see vinay gandhi garu by he will discuss all these uh, the demand and recovery chapters and uh, now i request uh, andar sridhar garu to introduce sri veer vinay gandhi garu
ശ്രീധരഗാര ഗുഡ് ഈവനിങ് മെമ്പേഴ്സ് സി എ വിനയ് ഗാന്ധി ഹി ഇസ് റിനോൺ സ്പീക്കർ ഫ്രം അവർ ഓൺ ബ്രാഞ്ച് which he needs no introduction but it is a customary practice to introduce the speaker to the members and for the benefit of members who newly joined for the session ca vinay gandhi is a qualified chartered accountant besides certified isc cisa and disa work experience he is at the present he is working as a partner of messrs billapatti and co ankapalli and vishakhapatnam and elements along with his father ca chidambaram billapatti garu he served as a trainee at hiraganga and associates hyderabad he served as assistant manager delight haskin sensels hyderabad he has various qualifications such as he has completed his graduation in commerce from usman university qualified as chartered accountant in the year 2010 at the very young age of 22 he is a cisa certified professional by iss usa and a disa professional and he is in the final stage of cpa from australia he has completed various courses conducted by the icai such as gst uh, indirect taxes certificate course on ifrs concurrent audit of banks forensic audit and fraud prevention drafting of appeals forex and treasury management public finance and government accounting indias other experiences he is a trained faculty and gst by the indirect taxes committee of the ICAI he has contributed various articles on service tax gst published by taxman tax publishers tax guru and tax management india he has presented various papers and regular speaker at seminars organized by the visakhapatnam branch of sarcf icai guntur branch of sarcf icai kakinada branch of sarcf icai rajmahendra branch and ongol branch of sarcf icai he is a renowned resource person at around more than 75 seminars on gst at various places across ap and telangana with these few words i introduce venegar to the august gallery more to the speaker sir venegar ji now you can take yes yes good evening everyone and uh, thank you so much for this uh, uh, opportunity uh, to participate in uh, legal sapta actually i am i am participating as a listener or a, a listener in the last two sessions but uh, today uh, from from the listener uh, seat i have gone to the resource person seat and thank you for this playing playing a duo a dual role very few people get this opportunity yeah i have to I have to thank chairman garu and uh, the persons who are responsible for that and uh, actually today's topic is with respect to demand and recovery actually even even before starting this uh, actually two weeks back i got a call from chairman garu uh, vinay this is what i am planning with respect to uh, means generally the legal procedures or the concept of supply returns and everything are being dealt with day in and day out or every year we are going to uh, we are going through the various sessions so why not we plan a week uh with the provisions after returns or what are actually happening or what are, what are practically happening now after returns and after filing of annual returns because we have already filed three annual returns and uh, almost yes three four annual returns and already fifth year fifth financial year is also done so after this now everyone is now seeing uh the uh, audits uh, coming up assessments going on and even uh, the demands which are being raised because demands is nothing new for us because demand even uh, in the month in the year of 2017 that is when the uh, what you call law is introduced itself within few months of law is introduced we have uh, we have already received uh, all the means uh, demands and uh, payment means the means the level of Uh, what you call uh, fastness by the officers we are already seeing it so uh, we have already seen that 
so demand is nothing new actually as far as i am concerned and many of us are concerned because whoever are dealing with gst for sure whomever whatever is the number of clients they have they have already received one or more of this demand uh, letters drcs or at least many of us while doing while filing gst r 9 or 9c we have already made uh, the corrections whatever are to be done and also whatever are to be uh, paid are to be are paid through drc 03 because that is a favorite uh, form which all all chartered accountants or, or even the officers like that uh, because even in uden portal also we can see the separate portion called means whatever is the itc which are which is being uh, brought out means which is reversed while and also uh, because all that is to show that gstr 9 and 9c are important so coming to demands and recovery uh, here has already been uh, explained or uh, highlighted by the chairman garo uh these are the sections which are dealing with demands and recovery chapter 15 of uh, cgst act and section 173 to 84 actually though they are 11 sections or um rules but the major sections are only two that is section 73 and 74 those are the two major sections for demand and all other sections are means uh, from 80 it talks about recovery and up to that again there are small small issues which are actually uh, which are helpful for the ssc and also wherever possible the recovery proceedings are uh, what you call uh, they are very tightened and a single rupee or single demand cannot be means a person cannot uh, what you call avoid paying so that is how the recovery proceedings are design so let us go into section 73 because this is a main important section which generally uh, many of us have already received if they if you would have received notices uh, please any any notice first please check for the section in which it has been uh, given because that is more important because that is how uh, it is section 73 or section 74 makes a lot of difference because uh initially when this notices are issued yes uh, everyone thought it will be under 73 but 95% of the cases are section 74 only because the may only difference where which is which we talks about 73 and 74 is this 73 is applicable where this is also as as already highlighted tax has not been paid short paid means less paid or erroneously refunded because once we got the refund we cannot say that yes i got the refund i'm happy no if it is an erroneous refund if because of any other reason that refund is found to be not in order yes they can demand you back that refund along with interest under section 73 and where itc has been wrongly availed or utilized both so again for availment and utilization also the they can demand tax and penalty and interest under 73 so whatever has been happened for what reason is other than fraud willful misstatement suppression of facts to evade tax so these are the three important uh, ingredients what i can say of section of demand it can, uh, what are these we will discuss because in section 73 it is other than these reasons so we will discuss in section 74 while we come to section 74 what are those actual reasons means what is fraud what is willful misstatement and what is suppression but uh, easy to remember we have to see whether if it is not a for means other than fraud willful misstatement or suppression of facts in these three cases other than these three cases if there is any tax that has to be demanded whether not paid or short paid or erroneously refunded or even input tax credit wrongly availed or utilized whatever it might be section 73 can be means notice can be issued under section 73 but for whatever uh, notices or whatever demand whichever tax may be it is might be uh, direct tax or indirect tax it might be cgst sgst igst there should be some time limit so for the time limit to issue a notice on of time limit time limit is linked again to the date of order because that is what they say they said 
three months before, prior to the time limit specified to pass the order, the officer can issue a notice. So that's why I've mentioned that also here, the last segment of time limit to issue order also here, because that is linked to issue of notice. So time limit to issue order is very, very uh, easily drafted. But again, uh, when we ask for re uh, extensions of annual returns, please extend the due date, please extend the due date. Because uh, we have already seen what happened and what happened in 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, and even in 2021, what happened to the due dates and what happened to the portal just before the time. And also the comments of, because I have, because due to Corona now, uh, thanks to, uh, actually thanks to COVID, because, for, because of that, we could hear sitting in our home or sitting in our office, we could hear many of the sessions because we have already been seeing since three years, almost two years, uh, we are into the virtual mode. And just now we are into the hybrid mode, virtual and physical. But even the hearings, in, at the high court level, even at the Supreme Court level are sometimes happening online. So that we could hear whatever, because generally if I go, if we see Delhi High Court or Supreme Court or Gujarat High Court, we being in Vishakhapatnam may not visit them or may not go there. So, but even in even AP High Court, because if I want to attend a hearing there, I have to go to Amravati to sit there or Vijayawada there. So now, because of COVID, we could hear the hearing. We could hear the sessions, what is going on, whatever, what are the arguments that, is being, that are being happened. Because why I'm talking is I heard the uh, hearing between Gujarat, in the Gujarat High Court while the, while the client or the association have applied for extension of annual return GSTR line. That is when the famous uh, quote that has become very famous nowadays that it is very easy to reach the moon, but not understanding GST. That is a fam that has become very famous. That uh, the passing remarks while while uh, during the arguments is that it is done by the Gujarat High Court person, uh, Chief Justice. So, but that is how GST is being looking at. And even the recent case of uh, recent case in the case of Ocean Freight, in case of uh, Mohit Minerals in Supreme Court, even there they have mentioned that. Uh, they have mentioned that even yes, GST is uh, still still uh, going, I mean, developing, and it is not a pure developed law. So that is how the issue of because while we ask for extensions of due dates, please bear in mind that this demand dates are also being extended. Once we ask for because that is linked to the annual return, because due date of annual return. And from that due date within three years, any time, the demand can be raised for that financial year. So, and before three months from that three years from the date of due date for furnishing annual return, because please bear in mind that is this is not date of filing annual return, but it is due date that is common for all. So that, in that financial year to which that short tax or not tax not paid is there to that, what is the due date of annual return? And from there, three years. And the, before that three months, till the three months, the notice issuance date is still open for the officer. And what are the options? Why I've, okay, I have received a uh, notice under uh, 73. So what are the options why with me? One is pay tax plus interest before show cause notice. Because here, what they have done is even before the issuance of show cause notice, they have given, the act has given an option to give a summary of the notice. That is what is generally called DRC-01A. That is what we generally receive through mail. DRC-01A is what is the actual proposal, means that you have done something wrong or you are short, you have taken ITC wrong or you have not paid this tax or you are uh, 2A and 3B is not matching, whatever it might be. Uh, that reason and the amount of CGST, SGST, IGST. That is first given as DRC 01A. Part A of DRC 01A, they will issue it. And we have to reply to that. Are we accepting it or are we, uh, sub, we, are, are we submitting some submissions there? That has to be done in part B of uh, DRC 01A. So after this part B submission, then the original show cause notice, that is DRC 01, will be issued. 
So that's why even before, means as soon as you receive DRC01A, if you pay tax and interest, you'll understand, oh, I have done wrong. Or because there are genuine cases like this, because in the initial stages, many of uh, even the consultants have given that uh, whatever are the vehicles purchased uh, in the name of the company or in the name of the firm. If it is purchased in the name of the firm, if it is two wheeler, four wheeler, or even a car is allowed, even for transportation of goods. But generally, that is very difficult to prove. And transportation of goods, yes, everything is allowed. Means if it is commercial vehicle or which is a goods transport vehicle, yes, it is allowed. But if that invoice or, or on an overlook, uh, the accountant has entered or has availed input tax credit of the vehicle, and we, while filing the returns, we generally, if they give the data on 19th, generally we will not have time to verify also. So on 20th, if you file it without verifying and that return, that, that input has been availed. And now department has uh, given a notice that uh, in DRC01A saying, you have taken this input, have you reversed it? If reversed, when, when did you reverse? Because recently many of the clients have already received these letters because uh, many of the automobile dealers have received the letters asking for seeking information of their sale to the GST, B2B, B2B sale. So now the buyers are given the notices. Have you, means you have taken some, uh, you have purchased vehicle, have you uh, availed input tax credit? If it is eligible, okay. If it is not eligible, why? Or if it is eligible, again, they're asking you to provide the copy of invoice also. So if I, I realize after I receive DRC01A that tax has to be paid or ITC has to be reversed, I can do that. I have to pay tax and applicable interest. If it is ITC and not utilized, there is no interest, but the ITC is availed and utilized. Again, I have to pay interest from the date of availment till the date of reversal. So that if I do it before the DRC01, means I have to, as soon as I receive DRC01A, I pay tax plus interest. And again, I intimate them through part B of DRC01A, then there will be no show cost notice at all. There will be no DRC01 at all. Otherwise, I am silent because again, this is also again, big problem that DRC01A are being issued to the mails, mail IDs of the SSEs. If the SSE did not see or did not uh, see regularly the mail and they did not intimate us or they did not take any action or they did not reply. There is every case that the rc one that is show cause notice has been issued. Again, I'll talk about this DRC-01 service of notice and all, but uh, once DRC-01 is received, because generally they can give it in person, they can ask you to come and take or they can come and give or they can send it through post or they can uh, give it through the registered email ID or they can upload on the portal, or even they can give, uh, means if the principal place of business, they can stick there if no one is available. And even if the principal place of business is closed, they can come and give it at your uh, residence, residential address. Even if no one is there, there, again, they can go and give a advertisement in the newspaper, saying, means local newspaper, saying that this is the notice that has to be given. So any way they can issue a notice or even nowadays I'm seeing notice being affixed in the GST office also, jurisdictional office also, even that is a valid thing. So all of this, if any of this is done and if I have seen the notice and I've realized that yes, I have made some mistake, I can pay even then, even within 30 days from the rate of service of show cause notice, if I pay tax and interest, then there'll be no penalty, no penalty. But again, no, I wanted to uh, argue or I wanted to submit my uh, reply to show cause notice and I want to uh, fight against that issue. Yes, I can do that. Reply to the show cause notice. Then they'll issue an order. If the, if, it, if the proper officer is satisfied that you need not pay or you need not reverse, fine. There'll be no issue. But if you issues an order confirming the demand, again, then, Generally, they, they will levy this 73.9 penalty is higher of 10% of tax or 10,000, whichever is higher. So 10% of tax or 10,000, whichever is higher, they, they may uh, mandate, means that is almost a penalty they will be issued. And 
uh, this is what are the forms. Yeah, means if you go to rules, because act speaks about the procedure, means normal, this has to be done, proper, proper officer has to do this, do that, do that. And this is the notice, means forms, DRC 01A part A, that is what I have said, that has to be given before service of notice. And after me, I mean, I have to reply it in part B of DRC 01A. If I want, I mean, the, anything to be paid after issuance of DRC 01A, that can be done through DRC 03, because that is how the DRC 04 is issued, means they will say that, yes, uh, they can issue an acknowledgement uh, because this is also making a big issue. Issue an acknowledgement, accepting the payment made by the said person. That means, if that means, means that again, the, the officers or uh, consultants are reading this as once DRC 04 is issued, the issue is closed. Means no, can, no one can open the same issue again. But again, that's why the officers are very, very keen or very, very are asking details again, because recently, um, even many of our clients who have paid through DRC 03, though the reasons are written in the DRC 03, again, they have given a letter or notice asking for information, means asking for uh, information why you have paid under DRC 03, have you paid interest on that, what is, what is the calculation, and uh, means if we say that as per GSTR 9, what is the reason for difference in tax, everything that again, almost like doing an audit of that transaction before issuing DRC 04, because again, because now, now the interpretation of that is being taken at us. Once this is DRC 04 is issued, then the issue is closed because again, that point cannot be raised in further audits also. So that's why they are uh, taking some time or, cal or verifying the documents and all the data before issuing DRC 04. Again, if I don't pay in DRC 03, so there is no question of DRC 04. Again, after come, after I receive the notice, if I want to pay it in within uh, before 30 days, that has to be paid in DRC 03 only. But acknowledgement is in DRC 05 order. It's order saying that yes, uh, show cause notice has been issued, SSC accepted, and tax is paid. And DRC 05 is issued. Again, if I don't want to take that two options, payment of tax before SCN or within 30 days of SCN, I can go with reply to show cause notice. That should be in form DST DRC 06. Because every reply or every notice or everything is numbered, labeled. I mean, I can say labeled in GST. Because generally reply to show cause notice, generally uh, even uh, it will have a minimum ingredients, but in GST, you have a detailed thing means like, what should be there in uh, GST DRC 06, means facts, grounds, prayer, whatever are the basic facts, details and all. So, because please see every, even the forms are available uh, online at cbic-gst.gov.in. Uh, in that, you'll have the updated rules and forms because as of now, first take January 22, uh, rules and forms are available. So all these forms, formats are available uh, online in that port, in that uh, cbic gstgovin So in that that format, I have to use it while replying or while preparing the reply to show cause notice. And then, when uh, the show cause notice has been issued, again the same thing of principles of natural justice means uh, if it is an app, uh, I have to give it. I have to give. I mean, they have to give me an opportunity of being heard. Even nowadays, uh, generally they are going it with virtual also uh, the hearings. So if it is virtual or uh, physical, whatever it might be, the order can be, the summary will be given in DRC 07. And if anything or error apparent on record on the order that can be rectified or order can be rectified from GST DRC 08. And I know uh, some of the orders which are rectified because there is a, a in one case, it was a 2A, 3B issue. And uh, they were give, have given uh, show cause notice and order, but before issuance of show order itself means after notice has been issued, reply has been submitted, for personal hearing has been done, and after that, two A has been updated. So we have intimated to the officer also that two A has been updated, but ignoring that letter, they have given the acknowledgement, but ignoring that letter, they have issued an order. So to rectify that order, because they said, no, go for appeal, you'll win. 
But again, if I go for a pill, I have to do the pre-deposit. I have to go to, uh, again, I have to file an appeal, wait for three months. For, I will have three months again. They will call me for hearing. And I have, if it is for state, I can I have to go to Vijayawada again to appear for appeal. And whatever are this? This is again a big process. Means the thing is simple. She said very simply that, sir, already two ways updated. So you can go for an appeal, you will win. Yes, I will win it. But why can't uh, you rectify the order? Since it is error apparent on record, it is... The letter is on file, on record, acknowledgement is there, and why, why can't you rectify? So then the order can be rectified, and she has rectified the order by showing on GST DRC 0 in because this is a clear fact that has happened. So that also can be rectified, and DRC 03, this DRC 08 can be shown. So uh, if the subsequent period is CM, yes, this DRC 02, because if you see, DRC 02 is missing in this list. So DRC 02 is generally subsequent period SCM. That is, if any show cause notice is issued already on the same issue last year or last tax period, and the same issue for the same uh, issue, the subsequent period if they want to issue, that is what we generally call it a subsequent period show cause notice. If that is to be issued, there is no fresh show cause notice needs. There is no need of fresh show cause notice but this form DRC 02, a statement saying that the same issue for the subsequent period and the period has to be mentioned. If that is there and DRC 03, DRC 02 can be issued for that. And the next procedure is same. And then mandatory penalty. So where, whatever is there, if I have self-assessed my tax and I have collected something in the name of tax and has not paid within 30 days, yes, there is mandatory penalty irrespective of I pay before SCM or I pay after 30 days of SCM, whatever it might be. But if that is self-assessed tax, which is not paid generally, self-assessed tax, because many may get the doubt that unless I pay the tax, GSTR 3B cannot be filed. So where is the case of self-assessed tax not being paid? So that, that can be GSTR 1 versus 3B. One, I have declared my liability, but 3B, I did not declare that liability and I did not pay. So that also can be considered as self-assessed liable tax, which is not paid. So if that is the case, or I have collected something as tax, I did not, means I, I have collected something as tax, but uh, after consulting uh, a chartered accountant or a consultant, they have said, sir, your transaction is exempt and you did not pay the tax. If that is the case, if it is collected as tax, I have to pay it to the government within period of 30 days. There is a separate section also for that. We will discuss there. But again, if that is the case, the mandatory penalty is compulsory. And now coming to section 74. So, so, so section 73 talks about only a, if I don't, if I did not pay any tax or I paid less or I, I have claimed or a refund has been erroneously given. Because again, all these cases, it is not fraud not willful misstatement of um, misstatement or not uh, suppression of facts. So without any of these three, if there, it has happened and they can give me a notice or even before notice, DRC01A, part A, part B, one, again, three payment of intimation, intimation of payment DRC03, and then acknowledgement DRC04 and DRC05 is when 30 days, uh, means before 30 days, if I pay, that is ERC 05. So all these cases, section 73 talks about only other than fraud, willful misstatement and suppression. Now coming to section 74. Section 74 talks about, again, the same issue, a tax not paid, tax short paid, tax erroneously refunded, or ITC wrongly availed or utilized, whatever it is, but by reason of fraud, willful misstatement, and or suppression. Again, now here it will be very, uh, or it will be important to understand these three terms of fraud, willful misstatement, because it is it should be willful, and suppression of facts. And all these three to evade tax. This is common to all the three. So what is fraud, what is willful misstatement, and what is suppression? So that is what has to be understood.
So, so what is fraud? Uh, fraud is not defined in the act actually, because uh, nothing uh, defined in the act. So we don't know what is fraud. But if we go with general meaning, because if that is not there, if nothing is there in the act, we have to go with the general meaning or dictionary meaning. So dictionary meaning says it is wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain. So there should be the basic element. That's why I have, means in, sim in simple terms, I can say that the basic element of fraud is to deceive. It should, it can, it should be deceiving anyone because that means I have to I have to have an intention to deceive someone. So if I have an intention to deceive and for my personal gain or a financial gain, or because not paying tax also might be considered as personal gain or financial gain. So we can understand what fraud is. And as per IPC, fraudulently is defined as a person is set to do a thing fraudulently if he does that thing with the intent to defraud, but not otherwise. So again, I see we know, we understand the terms that fraud is again intended to defraud, but not otherwise. So, and section 17 of Indian contract act says, fraud means making a suggestion as a fact, which the person making does not believe to be true. So I know that it is not true, but I have said that or uh, make made other person to believe it as true. Again, fraud also means active concealment of fact with a view to deceive the exchequer. So again, whatever, whatever is the fraud or whatever is the definition which is not defined, again, that should be the intent should be deceit. And what is willful misstatement? We can understand what is misstatement because misstatement is again wrongly or uh, wrongly telling something or wrongly showing something or wrongly entering something. But that should be willful. Willful is again intent to evade GST. I have to have an intention or I have to I have done that misstatement willfully. I know all the facts, but I have done it. Means I know that there is some that, that I have made sales or I may have provided service to someone and I raised an invoice, I got money but I did not declare in my return. I, because I am the person who issued an invoice and I in my bank account, the amount has been received, but I did not declare that transaction itself in GST return. So that is willful misstatement. So, but this misstatement should be willful because this is how, because whatever um, generally what department says is, you know the fact, that's why you have done it. So whatever it is, they will say it is fraud, it is willful misstatement, and it is suppression. But it is on the SSE to prove that it is not fraud, it is not willful misstatement, and it is not suppression. And dictionary meaning is having or showing a stubborn and determined intention to do as one wants, regardless of the consequences. That is called as willful. And a false statement will be termed as willful if it is intentional or deliberate. So intention is what is more important. Even before, even in the case of fraud also, intend to deceive is important. So intention is what is more important in the case of fraud, willful misstatement. Suppression is very simple because in the explanation to that section itself, they have given that suppression shall mean non-declaration of facts because this is again, what I feel is very, very uh, uh, broad meaning to the word suppression non-declaration of facts, non-declaration of information, which a taxable person is required to declare in the return. So again, see, I, the, I did not, there is some information which is to be required to declare in the return. I did not declare it. So that is suppression. And it can be in the return, in the statement, in the report, or any other document furnished under this act. So it need not be only in the return, in my return reply, or in the, in the document which, has, which I have given it as a proof or whatever document I furnish to the officer, if I don't declare any facts or information, that is suppression. Second, failure to furnish any information being asked for. If I don't furnish any information, means 
have given uh, have been given a notice i did not reply i have given been given an opportunity of being heard or personal hearing date or intimation of hearing is given i did not participate or i did not uh, uh, attend the hearing all these cases will be coming under suppression of facts because again why i am insisting on these three is if only if there is suppression only if there is willful misstatement and only if it is fraud only then this section 74 can be invoked otherwise section 73 because again we have to be very very uh, clear in the case of section 73 or 74 why because i'll show you what's the difference between these three or section 73 and 74 again the same time limit but there it is 3 months here it is 6 months fine 3 months will not be a big issue but here the time limit to issue an order is 5 years from the due date of furnishing of annual return there under section 73 it is 3 so once the 3 years from the due date of annual return is passed after that date if there is no intention of these three means if i if the officer or if i can prove that there is no fraud or willful misstatement or suppression again that they, that cannot that tax or that refund cannot be demanded if that is to be demanded i should have the intention means if that then it can go up to 5 years so 5 years from the due date for furnishing of annual return uh, for that financial year to which the tax not paid or short paid or refund erroneous refund or itc is uh real i mean away so all these cases that that this case is 5 years means almost it can be said that it is extended period of limitation 3 to 5 years can be said as extended period of limitation even here also i have options but again if it is under section 74 if even before issuance of show cause notice if i have if i want to pay tax if it uh, notice is under section 74 means if it is drc 01a which is issued under 74 i have to pay mandatory penalty of 15% of tax if it is under 73 i need not to pay penalty at all i even if i pay tax and interest that is sufficient but if it is under 74 i have to pay penalty at 15% of tax before show cause notice and again i did not reply or no i i, I ignored that drc 01a then once drc 01 is issued again here also i have an option within 30 days of show cause notice to pay there i have an option to if there also i have an option before show cause notice if i pay no scn if within 30 days of show cause notice if i pay no scn that means scn will be uh, uh, dropped no penalty but here even before scn if i pay it is 15% 30 days from the date of show cause notice if it is under 74 it is 25% of penalty and sorry that uh, no penalty is written but yes 25% of tax within 30 days if i have to pay and if i reply to that sh uh, uh, show cause notice and order is passed now i have an additional option because there i don't have this option but here i have an additional option saying if i pay the penalty tax plus interest plus 50% of the penalty of tax means 50% of tax as penalty within 30 days of the order even then the adjudication proceeding will be closed so if it is under 73 if it is paid tax and interest is paid before scn no scn within 30 days of scn if i pay tax and penalty tax plus interest proceedings are dropped and if it is but here under 74 penalty is mandatory so that's the main reason or again means practically what we think is okay let me pay and close if that is the case fight for 73 and not 74 because first fight should be that notice should not be under 74 it should be under 73 because uh, again i can say that it is not willful misstatement or suppression or fraud if i can prove that i don't have this intention they can they have to do it under 73 and then what is the benefit if i go into 73 penalty cannot means can be uh, escaped 
So the same procedure, the same forms, everything is same uh, as of 73 and 74. Only thing is this uh, before show cause notice and within 30 days of show cause notice, this penalties will come into play. Sir Vinay, yes. here in any other case, it is 100% penalty, no? 100% penalty? Because now 50% within 30 days yes, from yes, yes. the issuance of order, Yes. It is 50% of them. In yes. any other case, it is 100% penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It means once an order is issued and 30 days is passed, whatever penalty is imposed in the order is payable. No other option, no other concession. Here, mm -hmm. though the order has 1 lakh, and I will say I will pay it before 30 days of, means on or before 30 days of show cause uh, order, I can, means I have a concession of 50% of the uh, penalty. Because that is actually, nowadays, every order has that options. The preamble of the order says this order is issued for this. And you can go for an appeal at so-and-so place within so-and-so period. And uh, form also, they're mentioning there. And last also, even here also, they are giving an option. If it is paid before 30 days of order and it is under 74. So you will have a concession of 50% of the penalty. Because if I see the uh, order, uh, order, means uh, at the stage of uh, order itself, means demand itself, they are giving me this option. I don't have that physical copy, but yeah, that uh, order is being uh, there, there itself. They are mentioning that 50% option is there. Once that 30 days is gone, gone. Because I have time of three months to appeal. So up to one month, yes, fine. And even, Recovery of tax because means I'm going one step ahead, but recovery of tax also once an order is issued within three months from the date of service of order, they can start the recovery proceedings till then they cannot because many people are getting notices or getting phone calls. They cannot issue a, a notice or a letter or bank attachment, but they're getting calls. Almost I can say threatening calls saying you file the appeal before one month, you file the appeal tomorrow. You file the appeal within 15, 15 days, otherwise, we will start recovery proceedings. Because there, there is uh, an option of uh, one option actually, uh, in the case of means, uh, there is a protection to the officer saying the recovery has to be started within three months. But if the officer thinks that it is interest, it, it is detrimental in the interest of the venue, then the three months can be pre -port. So that's the only reason why, because but this cannot be done in all the cases. This cannot be done. This cannot be extended to all the cases. It is. It can be extended like I'm not filing returns since many months and uh, I'm not responding to any notices or orders or because bank attachment is almost like a uh, issuance of DRC 01A to the, to the department of means previously. But once uh, courts have issued or courts have scolded or courts have means uh, scolded officers saying why are you going to the bank attachment directly why can't you think something means do before to do something before giving to them so when the courts have intervened in the matters then again the same the bank attachments have reduced and even the arrests bank har have harassment calls and all have reduced to some extent because of that uh, court intervention and all so there is one uh, question in the chat. Uh, I have received DRC 01A where penalty is 100%, but you have said no penalty will be there under 73. Please clarify. Sir, actually, once you go to DRC 01A, check under which section they have given. If they have given under 73, if though they, they, they can demand a penalty of 100%, but if you pay it, before means they will give you 15 days time to reply means under drc 01a part b so if that is the case if you reply or if you pay tax plus interest because again here also many people are missing that they are paying tax but not interest but you have to pay tax plus interest and intimate them in part b of drc 01a then automatically the penalty is dropped it, it is demanded it will be demanded in one year but once you make the payment within uh, before issuance of show cause notice, or if it is under 73, 
if it is under 73, because there you have said under 73, if that is the case, even after DRC 01, within 30 days, if I pay tax plus interest, penalty is automatically waived. There is, uh, means the demand will be there in the notice. Demand will be there in DRC 01A, but it is automatically waived by the provision of the section itself. So no one can overrule the section. So section will prevail. I, I think it is clear. And yeah, moving forward to section 75. Section 75 talks about, this is a normal procedure. That is where I said, uh, means if there is a, I know that I'm going to get a notice. I go to court or appellate tribunal or uh, I can, I will go there and get a stay even for service of notice. Or I, I know that his order is being issued or order is being served and I am there. I am I went to the court or appellate tribunal asking for a stay of issuance of order. So if I go, if I get any stay for service of notice or issuance of order, that period, this is normal, normal in even in direct tax law and even in indirect tax law that that period is excluded in the calculation of time limit that uh, three years and five years time limit. So ultimately for issuance of shokas notice and order also that uh, time limit is being excluded. And once uh, section 74 order is confirmed by the officer who passed the, who issued the shokas notice and based on the order, I go to an appeal and at the stage of appeal, I am succeeded in proving that there is no fraud, willful misstatement or suppression. Then the section itself means there they may say, yes, the order is uh, extended period of limitation cannot be invoked. Then the officer has an option of again going to section 73 and then adjudicating the procedure. So that option is not taken away, but that option is still available. So once a uh, court or appellate tribunal or appellate authority because tribunal, it is there in the act, but there is no tribunal even till today. So if that section 74 is not sustainable, under section 73, the proceedings can be taken. Obviously opportunity of being heard has to be given OBH because uh, how many here have already written or already faced uh, show cause notice replies? Can I, can I uh, get a, uh, raise hand or in a chat. Because at least DRC 01A, you might have got it. Zero 01A or 1 or no one got it or no one wants to reply. Okay. Yeah, I can see some hands raised. Yeah, now, now the number is increasing. <laughs> okay, so uh, generally when we reply to show cause notice, what is the first uh, ground or what is the first submission? Even this is not only for GST, even in direct tax or even in indirect tax, what is the first submission generally we give? What is the first submission generally we give uh, in any reply? So acknowledgement of receipt is fine, but what is the first submission I'm talking about? Fact is there, acknowledgement is there. What is the first submission? Means my first ground, I can say. Because ground generally, when we, when the, when we are going for an appeal, we call it as ground, but when we do it, what is the sub? Yes. Without, without jurisdiction against law and fact, that is principles of natural justice. Means you have not filed principles of natural justice. Yes, thank you, Ashish. Uh, they will say, means first submission will be like, 
this is against principles of natural justice because generally we we first we will ask the client about the facts whether when did they receive the uh, notice or order or how because uh, you know uh, we in telugu will say uh, that means more importantly any question or any act or anything can be learned by asking a question only induku emiti ela so this is how we ask so why did you receive the notice when did you receive the notice how did you receive the notice these three questions are the basic questions generally we ask whoever comes with drc 01a or drc 01 because once uh, drc 01a or drc 01 is issued uh, this has to be done because that is uh, that is very very important to check what is the mode of service means how did you receive because many sses are threatened to come to the office and sign backdatedly uh, to means receipt of the notice so that is again a very very uh, bad position as of now so that that should be avoided and uh, many people will throw away the cover in which it has been received because if the cover is not there i cannot prove that if that is there at least i can go with the number i can track it with india post or i can get the stamp or at least on the seeing the stamp date on the stamp i can go the date of receipt of uh, notice so because that is very important because there is time limit for issuance of notice and there is time limit even for reply if i don't reply also why you did not reply even that even then because all these are important because the first submissions in any reply to the show cause notice is because why i am deviating from the section is section is already learned since 2017 or even 2016 we are leave, we are learning we are reading the same section the same wording the same thing uh, many many times so that's why here i wanted to more uh, concentrate on how are we dealing with practically how are we dealing with uh, the replies uh, this to the show cause notices and whenever you receive a show cause notice what ingredients actually you have to verify in that what i said whether what is the section and how did you receive it when did you receive it and also what is the matter in that because if it is under section 74 again i have to go and check because again this is only through an interview or i can say investigation or i can say uh in means uh, questioning the sc or the accountant or the person who is responsible for filing the return or do, doing business so i have to ask them when did you give it when did you receive it how did you receive it they uh, means uh, whether have you replied to drc 01a or not because all these points we have to mention there there in the facts if they have given a reply we have to mention if they did not give the reply why did they why they did not give the reply also has to be mentioned and we have to see whether this opportunity of being heard is given means if the order is passed and i have to see whether the opportunity of being heard is given if the opportunity of being heard is given and assessees did not appear why did he did not appear because all this is important to prepare the grounds because of that is the first ground generally we give either in show cause notice or in the order or in the appeal also when we are replying for the appeal or the show cause notice that the principles of natural justice whether they have been followed or not because i can mention some or many cases where appellate tribunal level itself they have uh, quashed the order saying principles of natural justice has not been followed even in the gst era if i go and see section 164 if they if i go uh, means example section 164 if i go to any case law because nothing is uh, actually decided on that issue but all the high court stays talks about the principles of natural justice has not followed so officer please again issue a notice follow the principle uh, principles of natural justice give them the opportunity of being heard means the procedure what is given in 73 or 75 or 74 follow that and then come back and that is how the the issues are being uh, stayed by the high courts even in gst issue, gst uh, issues also as of now also so this opportunity of being heard and adjournment because 
generally in sgst state appeals i i will see a standard letter saying this is your last uh, opportunity of being heard so please appear in person or through our drum authorized representative without fail but i can Yeah, am I audible now? There was a power cut here, so. Sir, am I audible? You are audible, sir, but uh, yeah. video is. Uh... No problem, sir. <laughs> no problem. Dark mode. I'll actually Dark stop mode. the video because again here there is no power, so. Yeah, if I'm audible, I can continue. Means, uh, yeah, it's, it's audible, sir. It's audible. It's audible. Yeah. Screen is also visible. You are yeah. in dark mode, then. <laughs> so far, <problem. laughs> no. Okay. So uh, adjournment also actually act even act provides uh, for three adjournments. Means I can adjourn. Means I can ask the reason. Means a client or SSC has an opportunity. If there is some genuine problem that he could not appear. Say for example, I have a hearing and I. i have another hearing in another jurisdiction or i have a conference to attend or I, my health is not good whatever might be the reason so if there is a genuine reason i can ask for adjournment but act says maximum adjournment for three times so even if the sgst or even if the order or or notice of personal hearing says about it, there is no adjournment but act is providing me the adjournment and the officer has the power to adjourn the case uh, if there is a genuine reason and again where the appellate authority or appellate tribunal or court modifies the amount means i have all i've gone there and i have gone to uh, mod the amount is modified obviously means they need not say that interest is modified penalty is modified that is automatically modified and also means all this is learnings from previous laws saying if since the court is silent on interest or since the court is silent on penalty that's it that is if the whole case is dismissed or the amount is reduced so the uh, penalty and interest are they did not talk about that so again the old penalty is or demanded I means department may say that so or even the client may say that interest on the short payment that means the uh, the demand is 1 crore but the court have or the appellate tribunal have reduced it to 50 lakhs if the appellate tribunal is silent on the interest so they may say so since they have reduced it to 50% or 50 lakhs they did not talk about interest so interest is not there so in order to safeguard the interest of the revenue again they have said interest on tax short paid or not paid shall be payable whether or not specified in the order determining the tax liability so interest is mandatory interest cannot be avoided if the demand is confirmed though they did not specify that interest has to be paid because generally uh, the wordings will be like int uh, applicable interest under section 50 is what is generally written even if it is not written also it says if the order determining the tax liability of the topic of interest also it has to be paid and if the adjudication proceedings are uh, once the time limit of 3 years from the due date of annual return or 5 years from the due date of annual return is passed then uh, the order is not issued over the adjudication is deemed to be completed no one can means uh, that proceedings under 73 or 74 are deemed to be concluded this is the reason where or even even in the under service tax if the nowadays now because the how we are in the fag end of due dates of uh, means last dates of uh, adjudication proceedings for service tax many clients are getting calls are that to come and receive or come and sign the register predated because please don't encourage those things because 
if they could not because recently i have received an order dated 31st of march on 17th of may because the client is called client has uh, client said no send it through speed post so they have sent it through speed post with, since they have no other option but yes here they have the order is dated 31st of march but they have issued on served or bcc received it on 17th of may so almost to one and a half month delay in issuing of order if i don't have the proof of receipt again they will say that date of the order itself is the date of means from then the time of time limit uh, continues so now if i want to because just generally there is two months from the date of order that if if there is a time limit if i don't have the proof of uh, receipt of order i don't have any proof saying that i have received on 17th of may my due date will be on 31st of may so i have received on 17th actually but i don't have the proof but within 13 days or 14 days i have to get the additional evidence and also i have to give i have to file an appeal uh, i have to firstly arrange for the pre deposit also because if the uh, order is around 1 crore and for example in the service tax it is 7.5% pre deposit again 8 lakhs or 9 lakhs i have the ssc has to get it within this 15 days so all this generally they will their legal time is around 2 months but if i don't have the proof that that's the reason why if you receive it or your client receives it the notice please save or at least take the pic of the cover in which you have received if it is through mail nothing can be done the mail date of the mail will be the date of uh, service of order and if it is to portal if that is through portal again there will be a big problem uh, means because once uh, the order is uh, uploaded on the portal generally there is no no intimation uh, being given or no message is being uh, received by the client that is a big problem because uh, there is no uh, unless because again courts many people have went to courts regarding this also saying uh, it is being uploaded on the portal and i don't know when is that means when the document is has been uploaded so even in those cases also nothing can be done but uh, we have to actually verify the portal at least because we are i uh, is actually beneficial to check whenever you file the return check notices and orders also at least to know that there is no notice or order that is being pending and not replied and again when and uh, section 75 also talks about when any penalty is imposed under 73 or 74 so that is what we have already talked about when there is any penalty under 73 or 74 no other penalty for the same act or omission shall be imposed because i could see some show cause notices earlier they are imposing 73 penalty 73 9 penalty and also general penalty so those cases when they are filing when they are issuing the order actually they themselves in one of the case uh, the the client did not reply at all but uh, they are, they themselves in the order itself they have uh, dropped the penalty under general penalty saying 73 penalty is already levied so no other penalty has to be levied as per section 75 so even this has to be considered so whenever we are replying or whenever we receive show cause notice first thing is to be uh, for principles of natural justice and next what are the points actually what is the issue and what are the facts because 9 80% of the cases i cannot say 90 but 80% of the cases uh, based on the facts itself the grounds can be uh, prepared because that is where uh, based on the facts many points because many orders when i am seeing uh, recent orders uh, they are not fine tuned or i can say they are being issued in hurry even uh, there are some cases where order or generally show cause notice because they issue show cause notices at once to bulk cost to bulk assesses 
even sometimes gst number doesn't match sometimes name doesn't match but if i am replying to that and if i am uh, order is being passed because again there is a section which talks about at least minimum contents at least order should contain this the order has to have relevant facts and basis of the decision because officer cannot merely say that uh, i am demand i am uh, confirming the demand he, he has to uh, talk about or he has to discuss the relevant facts and also the basis of his decision because generally all this basis of decision will be like the order will be 15 pages first page first two pages or first page will be preamble second page will be facts third page will be our written sub means the show cause notice issue third fourth page fifth to tenth page will be our reply to show cause notice verbatim copy paste and from there then it will be like discussion and findings and on that discussion and findings many orders will have only section 73 says so and so section 73 is reproduced and full section 73 is reproduced since the case is willful misstatement we will not talk about why it is willful misstatement also we will just say since it is willful misstatement of facts uh, extended period is uh, allowed and i hence i am demanding so and so that's all nothing will be discussed but act says basis of his decision should be there in the order if that is not there again the order itself is invalid or order itself can be said as a uh, wrong or made up order and amount of tax interest and penalty cannot exceed whatever is there in the notice means whatever is there in the note specified in the notice that cannot means order cannot go beyond the notice even in the amount of tax demanded or interest or penalty and also on additional grounds means if a if a notice is given for a particular issue or particular ground some other thing cannot be raised in the order and demand and then demanded because that or notice that's why generally when we reply to a uh, uh, order or when we file an appeal we will give the order appealed against and means all the all the things from the starting uh, order appealed against uh, for that order what is the reply of the show cause notice means based on which the order is issued and what is a show cause notice all the th things means from drc 01a part a till order order in original that is order uh, which is passed all this will be issued or it will be given along with the appeal document so that because it, they have to know what we have given and what are the grounds which are raised in notice and whether there are any additional things that are Uh, added in the order because order cannot go beyond show cause notice that is that can also be one more ground one is principles of nature principles of natural justice not followed second ground can be this order cannot go means order is beyond scn so that is also can be one of the ground and then uh we have means generally in the appeals and all we'll go actual issue if for example since i have already started that issue of section 16 164 now again now i will discuss of what is uh, means whether itc is a input tax credit is a right or uh, is it a benefit for under gst whether 164 means implementing a timeline to avail the input tax credit is correct or not so whether again i will discuss on means whatever are the issues means uh, general for example i am saying 16 for issue i'll i'll discuss these two points and also the non implementation of gstr 1 2 3 that is matching concept because if the matching concept would be there gst input would be uh, finalized even before filing gstr 3b but now since the 3b is only linked to payment but here since i don't have to i am my hands are tied to confirm the input tax credit also so even like that i'll go and talk about 16 for issues and lastly again please ensure that whatever are the demands in the order means tax have given uh, grounds if it is interest again even for interest i have to write a ground 
since the tax itself is not payable, interest cannot be, need not be, means cannot be demanded. At least a single sentence. And then going to penalty. Why penalty cannot be imposed on me? On each, because on each uh, point demand, on each point of demand, I have to give grounds of grounds of appeal or even in show cause notice, the submissions. If that is, if, uh, and please, please mention that at last, SSE reserves the right to alter, add, or reduce, or uh, submit new admissions, new submissions, additional submissions, while hearing or while uh, disposing of the appeal, or, or replying or issuing the order. And also, please mention that your SSE wishes to be heard in person or in virtual world, whatever it is, because in the, this one actually to be heard in person and all is actually included in the form itself. So when you go and see DRC 06, even in that RGS 01, there one form will already, it is already uh, go with, you want, does the SSC or appellant wants to be heard in person and all. So even then, even in grounds of appeal or submissions also, I prefer mentioning that. Now, uh, going to self assessed tax. So here it says, self assessed tax, that's what I said. in GSTR 1, but missed in 3B. There might be genuine reasons even for that. Yes, I agree. For 1 and 3B issues also, there might be genuine reason that I have declared a wrong invoice or I declare invoice twice because means twice means with a different GST, different uh, invoice numbers or instead of 1 lakh, 1 zero is added while filing GSTR 1. There are genuine reasons for that, but please rectify those in the subsequent GSTR 1. Though in GSTR 3B also you have rectified it, that can be said that it is a difference in self assessed tax. But again, you you have an opportunity of being heard, and you can uh, say that this is the error that has happened, and this is rectified in the subsequent one. Because now you know one and 3B and all. As soon as a return is filed, many people are receiving orders or notices for that. So that's the reason why I'm saying that. Uh, self-assessed tax means once you self-assess the tax and here again if you see the section it starts with non-withstanding anything contained in 73 or 74 when the uh, tax is self-assessed in accordance with return furnished under 39 remains unpaid or any of the amount of interest payable remains unpaid the same shall be recovered under provisions of 79 because 79 talks about the recovery of tax. So under that provision, even the interest and the tax, which is self-assessed, can be recovered or can be demanded. But again, that here, this is where it is an additional uh, explanation saying, self-assessed tax shall include tax payable in respect of details of outward supplied furnished under 37, that is GSTR 1, but not included in the return furnished under 39, that is, Simple understanding or simple words, 1 versus 3B. If there is something under 1 versus 3B, if that is the case, even that is considered as self-assessed tax. So if there is self-assessed tax that is not paid or that remains unpaid or short paid, they can recover it directly. So whenever, because mistake is human, so anyone can do some mistakes. But once you do a mistake and you identify that mistake, please rectify in the subsequent GST return. Now coming to section 76, which talks about tax collected, means I'm, I, I won't say tax collected, I'll say amount collected as tax, means in the invoice I've mentioned it as CGST, SGST or IGST, and I have collected it uh, on as tax, and I have to pay it interest if I don't pay it and also penalty and this penalty is mentioned in 122 again they said 100% of the tax so collected or 10,000 whichever is higher can be imposed if I collect some amount of tax and I don't pay it to the government. Again it, it also says that if it is 
not a taxable supply. Means I I have collected, I have treated something as taxable supply, and I've issued a taxable invo tax invoice, and I have collected tax or I have collected amount as tax, but I did not pay. And later, that is actually not a taxable supply. Even then, I am bound to pay whatever is collected as tax to the government, even if it is uh, for non-taxable supplies or exempt supplies, but I collected it thinking that it is taxable supply. Section 77, this almost every one of us or many of us have already used it. So I saying, if I treat a transaction, which is actually inter interstate supply, but I paid it as interstate, means I, that is actually CGST as GST, but I have paid it as IGST. In that, the, in that case, and also the same provision is applicable even in IGST, there is provision in IGST also. If IGST is paid as CGST, SGST, actually uh, that tax has to be paid under correct head and claimed as refund, means whatever is paid under wrong head claim, be claimed as refund. And one benefit they have given under section 77 is you need not pay interest on that. And Actually, nowadays, even means if I realize that I am paying IGST or CGST, SGST wrong, if I realize that I've paid it wrong or I've claimed input as wrong, uh, that CGST, SGST or IGST uh, means I pay, this provision is actually there even before, but even if it is not there, means even if now it has been implemented. In cash ledger, I wrongly paid it as IGST or CGST, SGST, or under fee, because late fee, generally fee under uh, 3B for filing late fee, I have to file it, but I have paid it, or it is fee, but I have not paid it under fee. If it is, early, you means earlier, I don't have an option to transfer interhead, but now I have an option to transfer interhead also, means in the, uh, cash ledger itself, I have an option, GST PMT 09, saying I can transfer interhead. Means CGST tax can be transferred to any head. SGST tax, interest penalty, CGST interest penalty fee, IGST interest penalty fee, CES tax interest penalty fee. Whatever it might be, I have an option to Transfer interhead means this case, this section 77 talks about once I set off the tax, means I treat it as interested, but it is interested. Then that, 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 that is the case which is being talked about in section 77. What I am talking is uh, even means I pay it on a wrong head, that also can be taken. So these are the main provisions under demand of tax. So, uh, any any questions uh, till now for demand? Members, if any questions are there, you can unmute and you ask the questions. Sir. Any clarification also? So far, any doubt you are having on any topic or demand? Section seventy three to seventy five. Whatever it is there, that you can unmute and ask, sir. Because now, from now, it is only recovery. There will be no big questions on that, but only on the demand, because this is how practically, because this is where we generally face. Because the next next step, what we are what we are talking, is uh, from the angle of the department. Till now, sir. what we are talking. Is reply means uh, interest is to be paid, sir, because whatever demand is there wrongfully collected and paid whether interest is to be paid yes 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 members please unmute yourself and ask the question sir So I think that you have clearly explained the Vinay Gandhi. 
either clearly explained or <laughs> no one understood. No, no, no. You explained in your deliberations are excellent. So that's why all the doubts are classified then and there itself, I think so. So next, because again, uh, here in this specific session, uh, my role is diff my role is uh, swap. So what uh, I expected in the session, <laughs> I'm talking now. <laughs> okay. Now talking about recovery. A recovery of tax, because once the demand is made, confirmed, and the appeal option is gone, or I did not go for an appeal, because now only appeals, either you have to go for commissioner appeals or high court, because there is no tribunal, even date formed. So my option of recovery of tax, As soon as my date of filing, due date of date, uh, filing of appeal is uh, done, they can ask me or they can recover the tax department, can start recovering the tax. So now, under recovery of tax, it might be like whatever way, best possible or whatever way is possible uh, to recover the tax, every way is. Uh, mentioned in the act. So now I, when I'm going to section 78 recovery, here, that's what I said, with, till three months they will wait because I have an option to file an appeal or within 30 days I have an option to uh, uh, pay tax and uh, voluntarily and all. So they will wait till, till three months from the three months from the date of order, service of order. If I don't go for the next step, means if I don't go for appeal or if I don't pay tax, either of that, then the recovery, they may start. So they may start from uh, harassment calls, which is not there in the act, but from the harassment calls, from attaching bank account or from uh, uh, giving, issuing notice to my uh, debtors, or to uh, detaining the goods which are on road, which belong to me, or there is an evable issue, and that goods can be can be sold, and uh, the tax this tax can be means with any other officer also uh, the issue is there. Even to that officer also they can issue a notice and ask them to uh, recover the tax. And where proper officer considered is expedient in the interest of revenue. That's what I said. That's the reason why made majority cases, you will receive uh, calls even before three months. Because this option, act has means, uh, they have saved their skin also that uh, if the person is, if they came to know that that person is leaving India or leaving, uh, uh, escaping from, uh, a country or escaping from the jurisdictional officer and all, they can expedite the process and they can do it, uh, but there should be reasons in writing. That is there always, there should be reasons in writing. And even before three months, or again, you have to, you they can demand or they can start recovery of tax. So again, what? how can they recover? There are many ways of recovering, that's what I said. Whatever way is possible, it is discussed in the act. First way is they may deduct or may require any other specified officer to deduct any, means you have applied for refund somewhere or you have applied refund or, or uh, some other officer is uh, owing money to you. All those can be uh, demanded, means I, they will issue a notice to that person, don't give the amount to him. Instead, pay us or pay to this demand. Second, detaining and selling the goods belong to such person which are under the control of the proper officer. But for all this, they're in the rules, they have specified a detailed procedure. They cannot simply come to my shop, take some goods and say, these are under my control, I will sell it. 
or they cannot come and sit along with me in the billing counter and uh, all the sales which I've received, I, they cannot set it off against us. That cannot be done. They can, they, these are all the specified procedure which is already there. They have to detain the goods and the goods have to be auctioned. They cannot simply say, uh, and even there is a restriction that officer or the person or the team who is dealing with my issue cannot sell or cannot buy those goods. Even that restriction is also there. So all in any of these cases, there is a specified detailed procedure, actually, which I could not add. Uh, I could not add it in the presentation because of paucity of time. But there is a detailed uh, rule for each of this, each rule for uh, detention of goods, rule for issuance of notice to specified officer, separate rule for recovery from the debtor, separate rule from recovery from collector. Everything has a different rule. And third option is recover from any other person from whom money is due, that is my debtor, or may become due, means my future, means I've given a loan to someone and uh, that loan is already mentioned or that is there in my books of accounts. And they know that so they can, uh, means that person has to pay me on some due date. They can issue a notice to him, to whom I have given loan, to not give me the amount, but give it to or deposit to the department or government as a recovery of tax. So that can be done. But again, I'm saying for all this, there is a detailed procedure. Second, distrain any movable or immovable property belonging to or under the control, detain the same till the amount is paid. And in case any part of the amount payable or cost of distress or keeping remains unpaid for 30 days, means they will keep my movable or immovable property. It might be my uh, car or uh, bike or my gold or whatever it is, my cash, whatever it is. And that can be that amount that can be detailed. And if that if in 30 days I don't reply or I don't pay and the cost of distress or keeping is being, is increasing. property that amount payable can be recovered towards tax and the balance will be paid to me. But again, for all this, there is a detailed procedure. They have to issue some forms. They yeah, have to yeah. give me some time to do anything. So, this is uh, within period of 15 days or 30 days. I think so they have to pay within 15 days of the auction. No, I'm not talking about uh, means after auction, how many days? I'm not talking about that. That for that detailed days are the right. That's why I said I did not include that here. This is in the asset, I can deal the property. And even if in 30 days I don't, they don't pay. I can means sell, sell that property again. For all this, there is a detailed procedure that I have to do an auction. I cannot sell it to someone I like, or I cannot buy, or I cannot sell it to someone uh, who is ready to buy. But I have to do it then as an auction only. Again, recovery through collector. Uh, this option is always available that I'll prepare a certificate saying this is the amount which is to be re uh, recovered or which is to be recovered as tax interest penalty from so and so person. And he is residing in your district. So I can give it to the collector or any officer authorized by the government. And that officer or collector Ha, will recover the tax as almost as a rear of land revenue when that procedure can be given. And even for this, there is a separate form. And recovery through magistrate, even this also, notwithstanding anything contained in code of criminal procedure, proper officer may, may file an application to magistrate and such magistrate can recover as if it were a fine imposed by him. If it is fine imposed by him, how he recovers that fine? we can recover that tax also from him. And uh, in some cases, they said, even this, these are the, some of the major things that has, that has been discussed in uh, act, but in the rule, they have clearly mentioned how, what is the procedure uh, uh, to recover the tax if they have shares or securities, if they have movable property, if they have immovable property, because even, uh, the same way how the collector is given certificate, even the RTO can be given the certificate and saying that 
the transfer of that vehicle cannot be done unless i accept and means unless the proper officer gives a clearance same like uh, the freezing of bank account even that i cannot part with any mobile property or mobile property unless the proper officer again says yes you can so even that can be done and section 81 talks about uh, sometimes transfer of property is not valid or it is valid why uh, is a normal understanding a uh, simple understanding saying i have some amount due from me uh, means up the proper officer says that charge means on the property there will always be a first charge so that first charge a uh, sale mortgage exchange any mode of transfer cannot be made or if it is made i know that i have a demand i know that there is a recovery of tax that has been initiated on me and if i transfer the property during that period that transfer is deemed to be void provided such transfer of charge shall not be void if it is made for adequate consideration in good faith means i i am selling the property to the parents if that is the case the transfer is not void and if it is for adequate consideration in good faith and without notice of the pendency means i don't know that there are some proceedings pending on me if then i transfer no problem or if i sell it to pay tax no problem or without notice of such tax or such term payable by the said person or previous permission of the proper officer i will take permission from the proper officer i will say sir i i uh, please give me permission to sell this property so that i could that's what i said i would sell the property to recover the, to pay the tax in that cases that transfer is valid but generally if that is not the case and i know that there are pendency of proceedings i know that i have to pay tax but with an intention to not pay tax or with an intention to evade tax or with an intention to escape from tax if i transfer any property that is treated as void that's what i said not withstanding anything contrary to containing any law for the time being in force save as otherwise provided in insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 except that case any amount payable by a taxable person or any other person on account of tax interest or penalty see the words uh, act is using any amount payable by taxable person or any other person on account of tax because they don't want to leave any other person means any person for example my debtor is given a notice asking him to pay that uh, due instead of to me to the government and i did not that debtor did not do it even that person also will be liable to pay to the government and that will be as a first charge on the property because see first they will or again this what i talked about is an extreme situation where my debtor is there in my books and as a creditor i am there in his books means he he is also accepting that i have to pay he has to pay me and he has received a notice and i have all my things are gone all all resorts whatever are there to recover tax from me are gone then even then they can ask from him and whatever might be even if i file an insolvency petition also the first charge will be on the property the first charge will be for the tax and provisional attachment also may be made because again now, till now i am talking about how to recover tax and now they will say because you will run away from me or because you are given more opportunities but you are still uh, not paying tax and i am hopeless that you will not pay tax and i am come i am sure that you will uh, you are going to escape then they can provisionally attach my property attach even my bank account this is where that power is coming to the officer to attach the bank account because whatever small issue is going on they are attaching my bank account because they are saying the 1 and 3b issue the demand recovery can be made through 79 so uh, there is no issue of notice and all because that is self assessed tax that is a big uh, means stretching the provision so these all recovery of tax and all 
can be done when is when there is a last resort as a last resort and not as a starting or as soon as there is some order passed and as soon as there is some uh, demand confirmed this cannot be resorted to there is a detailed procedure even uh, i can share you with that with the rules also which talk about which talk about that's what i said there is detailed rules on recovery so these are the rules which talk about recovery yeah this is for recovery by deduction from any money owned that is to my debtor and this is for recovery by fair or sale of goods under control of proper officer so even for this again they say where any amount due is recovered by selling goods belonging to such person in a accordance with 791b proper officer shall prepare an inventory estimate market value and proceed to sell only so much of goods as may be required for recovering the amount along with administrative expenditure and again they said process of where how can how can that be sold auction including e auction and again there are there is separate form drc 10 that should be maintained and again if that's what sir uh, what chairman gar is talking about is this 15 days last day for submission of bid or date of auction shall not be earlier than 15 days again all all this pre deposit pre bid deposit and a notice to successful bidder in trs is 11 and he has to make payment within 15 days uh, from the date of auction and certificate has been to be issued in trs is 12 and where the defaulter pays the amount under recovery uh, before the notice under to then the proper officer shall cancel the process of auction so always even the bank also has the permission or power to cancel auction any time before it starts and uh recovery of by say goods or conveyance detained or seized in transit even if there is a detailed procedure for all this the common thing is a auction only and recovery from a third person so even in this the form has to be given in gst drc 13 and uh, gst drc 14 the proper officer will give a certificate saying yes you have paid your dues because again i means if i am the default person i should not again go and ask my debtor to pay me because he already paid it to the officer what is the proof of payment for him is drc 14 again recovery through execution of a decree even for this of a civil court uh what what when that magistrate and all all this there is a separate procedure that should be followed and recovery by fair sale of immovable or movable property again i have to make an inventory list of inventory again i have to um, make an estimate of market price issue an order of attachment in form grc 16 and prohibiting any order and and this a copy has to be given to revenue authority transport authority whatever authority on whom this encumbrance can be made and after this this immovable property and all again officers shall, shall seize in accordance with provisions of act notice uh, auction has to be declared auction again has to be done the same pre bid deposit and uh, if the auction is conducted within 15 days the person has to pay and even the objection has all, all that principles of natural justice that is what is prayed is detail in this rules and also prohibition against bidding or purchase by officer that's what i said that officer or no officer or other person having any duty to perform in connection with any sale either directly or indirectly bid or acquire or attempt to acquire any interest in the property sold so that person cannot do that or cannot participate in the auction at all and prohibition against sale on holidays and this is there already on sunday or other general holidays recognized by government or any day which has been notified to be a holiday for the area in which sale is to take place if there is any holiday declared on that day auction cannot be done assistance by police proper officer can seek assistance uh, to do his duties as officer in charge and attachment of debts and shares even for this a debt not secured by a negotiable instrument share in a corporation 
movable property not in the possession of the defaulter except for the property deposited in or in the custody of any court all this can be attached by form gst drc 16 again prohibiting that in case of debt creditor from recovering the debt in case of share person in whose name the share may be standing from transfer or dividend receiving any dividend in case of any other movable property person in possession of the same from giving it to the defaulter so any of the things and again the copy of order shall be affixed on conspicuous part of the office of the proper officer and another copy in case of debt to the debtor in case of shares to the registered address of the corporation and in case of other movable property the person in possession of the same so all this all the principles of natural justice which are to be followed even going to the last resort are given in detail in the rules before going to going or before going directly uh, for recovery means i the officer cannot come to my office now and say uh, i am confiscating this laptop yes but again uh, this has to be given again attachment of property in custody of courts or public officer even for this also there is a separate means the property is attached in custody of any court of proper officer the officer shall send the order of attachment requesting that whatever interest or dividend payable may held may be held in the recovery of the amount payable and even in the case of partnership where the property to be attached consists of an interest of the defaulter being a partner in the partnership property the proper officer may make an order charging the share of such partner in the partnership property and profits with the payment of amount due under the certificate and by the same or subsequent order appoint a receiver of such share either already declared or accruing and of any other money which may become due to him in respect of the partnership and direct accounts and inquiries and make an order for sale of such interest see even whatever is there in the partnership means uh, partnership property also to the extent of his share can be attached and the other partners shall be at the liberty at any time to redeem the interest charged or in the case of sale being directed to purchase this so other partners can purchase they have an option but again that partnership share also can be attached disposal of proceeds of sale of goods or conveyances uh, and movable or immovable property how this has to be disposed means whatever are the realized dues that has to be first apportioned against administrative cost next against payment of penalty next amount due from the defaulter under any rules and the balance shall, shall be credited to electronic cash ledger of the owner and again uh, if that person is not registered and he stopped his business and has closed the registration shall be credited to the bank account of the person concerned where it is not possible to pay the balance of sale proceeds as per this uh, sub rule again the person concerned within period of 6 months from the date of uh, such period may allow say uh, with a normal, normal fund they have to give to the fund of india consolidated fund of india, um, consumer welfare fund and recovery through land revenue authority that's what collector even for him the form gst drc 18 has to be submitted to the collector recovery through court that is to recovery through material magistrate form gst drc 19 recovery from surety where any person has become surety he may proceed against this chapter as if he were the default and payment of tax and other amount in installments this is section 80 80 talks about installments so so recovery till 157 all this procedure whatever we have already talked about the proceeds or modes of recovery the rules are given clearly on what to do what the proper officer should give or what forms he has to give it and what is the time period and what is the procedure everything is there and now coming to recovery in installments now act also has given after all this even if the uh, of the person due to his financial uh, difficulty or whatever genuine reason is ready to do it but it will take time he can apply for payment in installments that's what it said form gst drc 20 to pay the tax but it is not applicable for self assessment tax but for dues under the under demands and recovery and the commissioner 
may give it up to 24 months installments, but even one installment is lost or one installment he did not pay, then and there itself, all other installments have to be paid. Provisional attachment also, like uh, including bank account, Form GSTDRC 22 has to be given. And recovery from company in liquidation, when the company is under liquidation, because see how the act is thinking of all possibilities uh, in case of uh, recovery. Even if the company is under liquidation, commissioner shall notify the liquidator in form GSTDRC 24. So all these cases means uh, the recovery can happen and recovery can, can be done because that's what I said, demand is the, where, is, is, is the thing where uh, we generally assist the client hand in hand. But in the case of recovery also, because many cases bank account is being attached. Again, here there is a contention that what is what bank account can be attached? Is it only the bank account which is declared as a bank account in the GST registration? Basically or initially, yes. But once this recovery procedure starts, because if I go and see, if I go and see this recovery procedure, it is extended to anything, even my uh, interest in some other partnership firm, even in my movable, immobile property, even my debtor, whatever it is. So I don't find any uh, wrong in attaching even any other bank account in, in the name of the uh, defaulter. And now is a defaulter because uh, recovery is not being made. But here again, another three days, three days left, but the last opportunity for any quasi-judicial proceeding which has a due date that is falling from 20th of May 2020, no, 15th of March 2020 to 28th of February 2022. Whatever is the due date or whatever are the appeals filed, whatever are the uh, appeals to be filed during that period which are missed, please file it before 28th of May 2022. Because as per Supreme Court order, that due date or the due date has been, uh, what you call a special provision has been made for extending that period of limitation saying, either the due date, if it is false after 1st of March, 2022, that due date, or if it is higher than 90 days, that due date, if it is less than, means already expired, 15th of March, 2020 to 28th of February, 2022, if whatever are the due dates which are expired for filing any appeal can be filed within 90 days from 1st of March, 2022, that is 28th of May, 2022, because there is only three days left. I can say two days left. So please, if anyone, is missing to file any appeal to commissioner appeals or to commissioner appeals generally, go and file an appeal in this three days. But the period has to be already expired from that specified period, 15th March to 2020 to 28th of February, 2022. Actually, I don't know whether this time or this sapta is scheduled like that, and this topic is scheduled like that, but still we have three days time. And this is actually the last opportunity uh, to file an appeal because I am, I have prepared an appeal today for filing, which is for which the order is passed in 2021 uh, October. So that time is already passed before 28th of February 22. So they have given, they have gone, got us an uh, opportunity uh, for but the time limit has to be expired before 28th of February, 2022. So uh, this is what I have to share. And uh, thank you uh, so much for uh, patient hearing. And thank you so much for uh, give, means I have to uh, thank myself or thank uh, the branch also, a branch and the, and the managing committee to giving me an opportunity because this is what means they, they made me read in that uh, 
uh, less time what i have been given because i have i have read this long back but uh, today i thought of listening to it but you made me speak so first speaking again i have to read it so in this brief period again i have brushed all my uh, all the chapters and rules so thank you so much actually for this opportunity and uh, any queries on uh, demand and recovery or any other any general matter which i can uh, uh, discuss we can discuss thank you so much members please ask any questions you are still yes deliberated the subject excellently well within a short time so even then he has explained apat bandu and sir alaga manaku vachi manaki asli hazardly ga he has rescued me and the branch so really i am very grateful to vinay gandhi in the because i kept him as a spare in my <laughs> this thing i know some difficulties will come i when difficulties will come you will come to our rescue like that so my dear members any questions are there please ask him sir uh, one more one more person i have to thank is uh, rahul patel ji since he did not come i got an opportunity to speak here so thank you so much in absence here to him also <laughs> because speaking in vishakhapatnam branch or speaking in a home branch either virtual or uh, physical like an uh, pride feeling for any speaker and also uh, again any uh, any uh, always whoever is the chairman i remember pvsp kumar garu only who gave me the first opportunity to speak ఈవెన్సనల్ ప్రాపర్టీ ఈవెన్ మై పార్ట్నర్షిప్ ఇంట్రెస్ట్ ఇన్ సమ్ అదర్ ఫర్మ్ ఆల్సో కెన్ బి అటాచ్ ఆర్ కెన్ బి రికవర్డ్ ఫ్రమ్ దేర్ ఐ కాంట్ మై ఓన్ బిజినెస్ బ్యాంక్ అకౌంట్ see because uh, there were certain judgments from gujarat high court and other high courts which says that loan is not an asset that's right come on thank you okay okay so something which is not your asset you cannot recover out of your uh, something which is not an asset od or cc is a liability mm. so attachment of od or cc is not possible and i remember a few months back even there was one judgment uh, which was circulated in our group also where in uh, the court has issued notice asking the commissioner to personally present in the court uh, as the other person has given in his reply that it is an od or cc account and it cannot be att attached uh, referring to instructions of gujarat high court and the commissioner has mentioned that uh, but it is in relation to asset commissioner it is not in relation to me so the said judgment is not applicable so the court wants to understand from the commissioner why the judgment is not applicable to him also so this is one gray area because what happens now, once your odr cc account is attached uh, unless uh, whatever the balance in the odr recovery cc recovery can be done recovery can be done sir so can i share here sir something ashish yeah please sir with the permission of the resource person can you would be a better one sir because as a ex banker you know all those uh, <laughs> problems because this is a, not only this gst it is a, this is problem is there in, when sales tax is there when income tax is there that odc cannot be attached like that but what is happening you know when the limit is available when the limit is for example that limit is there 10 crores when he has availed only some 6 crores that 4 crores can be attached or when this is, whatever credits are coming that can be attached that is the practical case that uh, whatever credits are coming that we cannot allow the drawings to the customer that is 
the whatever the credits are coming, that we we pass on to the government authorities. Uh, sir, one loophole, sir. Next month, I immediately on the attachment, I will give you a DP statement showing my DP as nil, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> what will you do, sir? So that is because that is where the court is telling that no. loan. It is a loan. It is not an asset. Ah, uh, okay. That is loan, sir. That I am telling that limit is sanctioned. ODCC limit is sanctioned ten crores, but he has availed only six crores. The four crores is due to him because he is having a drying power. He can draw at any time because up to the sanction limit. So some crores because I don't remember exactly the cases. Well, previously also when central access and other people have attached the cases, even income tax also had attached like that. And we, as a banker also, that I didn't agree for this uh, attachment. But again, the court has uh, order very specifically told that what is the unavailable limit, undrawn undrawn balances are there. That because if drawing power is available to the extent they can. Stop it. That is where I am selling, na sir. One, the moment I know that you have attached my account, tomorrow morning I will file a nil DP statement. So Ashish. normally, whenever a notice is issued, automatically bankers will stop it. Whether <laughs> yes, one one intervention here, uh, sir is talking about from the point of view of bank. Exactly. Means it is possible. It is possible. Uh, to, no, it, it is, is happening also. Yes. Now you are talking about legality of that, whether that can be done I mean, exactly. by the tax officer. Yeah, because the thing is, the court said that there is no debtor creditor relationship between banker and uh, the borrower. Yeah, it I is understand. a loan. See, again, all, all these cases means when I started, means when I uh, entered this uh, litigation matters, only thing I understood is how you, pro you project the case. That is how the decision will be. Exactly. Either, either at the appeals level or even in the high court also, because the same matter, if you go and uh, present it in a different way before the same judge, the judgment is different. Yeah, uh, duly accepting, but this is actually uh, where I just am having your view. Uh, the reason is you now, if uh, okay, you are closing my current account, uh, the, the amount which is in my ba the balance in my current account is my asset you are attaching, fine, good. But you cannot create a loan on me for purpose of your recovery. Hmm. It is creating a liability on me for your recovery. So one liability is being discharged by another liability. Hmm. Because this is a common problem and business will start choking. So it is more of an academical discussion even though you and me both know that department yes. is doing I, that. No, I have one more query. Can't I pay GST from uh, CCOD account? That is how you are going documents? to use. Yes, you can use it. That is your liberty. That hmm. is your liberty. But you cannot be forced to do something with your loan funds. Hmm. Ah, that's what, what I'm saying. Means when when I even, can... even latestly, we came across a banker notice was issued to company, they attached even the director's account also. Mm. They said that you are a joint signatory to the company account. So we are attaching on a matter of precaution. That is, that's what, that is stretching. <laughs> that is stretching. And we have one more uh, thing uh, other than the CCOD. And Once a proceeding is done under 73 or 74, can the officer opt to levy tax under 73 or 74, but he doesn't want to levy penalty under 73 or 74? Come again, come again. He wants to recover demand tax under 73. 73 or 74. Huh. Okay, presume he has a, a issued a demand stating that he wants to recover the tax under 74. Okay. But he doesn't want to recover penalty under 74. Uh, because he wants to go for 122, 125. Yes. Hmm. Latestly, we received one addendum where actual notice says tax under 74, interest and penalty under 74. We received an addendum just two days back when our session was happening. The officer says that uh, penalty under 74 is omitted. 
pen, uh, it is proposed to levy penalty under 122 only because that is higher <laughs> now because there is no uh, uh, slab of 15 25 50 100 for uh, 122 mm -hmm. so can uh, no uh, if we read 74 1 mm. it says tax interest are penalty mm. uh, and everything should be under 74 only are is it permissible uh, to uh, read it like this, separately, separately? What would be your view? Because this is from again central I'm department. Now. <laughs> ah, I'm reading the is, wordings again now. Exactly. This is what actually you now created a confusion. If it is so, from tomorrow, everybody will start it's living penalty under 122 only. Yes. And even after SCN, also, if I am ready to pay, I had to pay 100% of the penalty. No, oh, again, uh, that 152550, which you're talking about, whatever might be the penalty in that, 74 talks about 15% of such tax. Hmm. They are not talking about penalty at all here. Under 74, 5, fine. 74, 5, 74, 8, wherever it is. Now, uh -huh. now yeah. the problem yes. with 74, 8 and 74, uh, 11, when the department itself has not levied penalty under 74, 8 and 74, 11, uh, are, it has never proposed a penalty under 74. When it mm. is proposed a penalty under 122, how can I now change it to 74? No, that's what. When the issue is under... Here, they said once it is adjudicated, means once you are uh, 74 notice is issued. And they said so many, what, whatever might be the penalties. This is the tax, this is the interest, this is the penalties and all penalties, whatever it is. 122, 123, 124, whatever might be the penalty. But Act has given me an option. If I pay tax plus interest plus 15% of tax, that is defined as penalty here. Then the proceedings will close. So then that 122, 125 also will close. Obviously, the proceedings completely will close. It did not say anywhere that only section 74 will close. Because see, 75 gives us immunity from other pro other penalties. Mm. Ah, okay. 74 per se doesn't give us immunity from other penalties. Mm. No, okay. I'm, I'm saying once. Here, here, if uh, if I read seventy four five uh, or seventy four six or, or seventy four five and six, the person chargeable with tax may, before service of notice under subsection one, pay the amount of tax along with interest payable under section fifty and penalty equivalent to fifteen percent of such tax on the basis of his own ascertainment of such tax or tax as ascertained by the proper officer and inform the proper officer in writing of such payment. So it asks, it asks, it is asking to pay tax as demanded, less interest, plus 15% of tax, which is called as penalty. Where now section 74.6 says, the proper officer on receipt of such information shall not serve any notice under subsection one in respect of the tax so paid or any penalty payable under the provisions of this act or rules made thereunder. So it is taking away once I pay the tax plus penalty plus means tax plus interest plus 15% of tax as penalty, it is taking away my whole 74 notice. Though they may say that they don't want to levy penalty under 74, they, if I if the act is giving me a penalty equivalent to 15% if it is before SCN. 25% uh, if it is within 30 days of uh, SCM and 50% if it is within because they are defining a penalty there. 50% of tax. 25% yeah. of tax. Now you go to 75, 13 once. Yeah. Hmm. Penalties imposed. Hmm. So when the officer himself has never imposed uh, the hmm. question of a save a saving from uh, this 13 See, doesn't come this, into play. This comes this 74 or 75 13 comes after the order after OIVO or in the OIVO. Not even because even, that uh, is when that is when they impose a penalty, right? 
the penalty on okay. the 73 or 74 is imposed at 73 9 uh, and 74 9 okay fine fine so at the at the stage of oio only then if they go with 73 9 or 74 9 they cannot go with 122 124 125 125. then they may use that state that uh, uh, thing that 74 i would i don't want to impose penalty under 74 but to impose but wording under 79 because somewhere i have written it as mandatory penalty which one which penalty mandatory See the penalty mandatory is uh, the way uh, the penalty is not as per a formula, but in a range. For example, one ah, that is range. For example, one twenty two at times says up to two hundred percent. Yes. So when it says up to two hundred percent, then if the amount of tax is less than five thousand, no penalty is required to be paid. Yes, but no, I am talking about seventy three nine, which says the proper officer shall. after considering the representation if any made by the person chargeable with tax determine the amount of tax interest and penalty equivalent to 10% of tax or 10000 rupees whichever is higher due from such person and issue an order is it not mandatory it is mandatory the he has to do again 73 uh, 10 is creating a buffer see we have received one order where officer has uploaded drc 07 for 100% penalty Mm. But within thirty days, when we are uh, going for payment, system is not accepting the whole amount. System is accepting fifty percent amount, and in payment register, uh, it is showing fifty percent waived. Okay. Already system started doing that way. Okay. Once uh, any order under seventy three nine or seventy four nine is uploaded by way of DRC zero seven, then the amount is not to be discharged with zero three, but it has to be discharged through payment module. Hmm. Okay, when we are going under payment module, the liability system itself is showing ten percent or fifty. So, the if you are going to pay within thirty days, the immunity of ten percent comes into play. Mm. Sorry, eleven uh, will mm. comes into play, and system will not uh, charge you the penalty. Yes, system itself is not charging. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why it is not charging is, uh, if th that is the provision or that is a benefit what Act has given me. That if the tax plus interest plus fifty percent of the tax, they determined the penalty as fifty percent of tax. Whatever penalty is going to be there, either it is seventy four, seventy three, one twenty two, one twenty four, one twenty five, whatever is the quantum. Vinay, you know one thing: there is no seventy three in the books of department. Ha! <laughs> yes. Okay. Department has an act, a very special act, where page which yeah, contains seventy three is not available. For them, everything is seventy four. Hmm. Sir, chairman, sir, is I think, sir, you have to mute, sir. Me, when like what time, Malle? Chairman, sir, mute lo under when like what? Mute lo under. Sir, I think I see that you are. See, so far we have discussed the penalties in section seventy three and seventy four. Whereas you are asking the penalty and imposed under the section one twenty two. Is it not? Sir. One twenty two, one twenty five are friends of our seventy three, seventy four, sir. Okay, that is Act anyway. This Saturday, this this Saturday section one twenty two to one twenty eight offences and penalties separate discussion is there. The reason is, sir, once the department doesn't want to levy under seventy four, is seventy four penalty mandatory in nature when tax is demand under seventy four, or the officer can forego his right to levy penalty under seventy four is a question of law. Yeah. Okay, so because okay. this is going to create a problem in future. At times, if possible, yes, yes. if department sees that a penalty amount is small, they will go for one twenty five rather than seventy uh, four, because they want to extract as maximum as possible. Because under section seventy four, only fifty percent of the tax amount only as a penalty. Exactly, if we pay within thirty days, even after passing of the order. Yes, yes. because And, in section one twenty two is totally different. So what happened, sir? Uh, I am it, saying. Whatever are the penalties demanded in the notice, if I pay fifty percent of tax as penalty, which is determined under seventy four, yes, that order is closed. The proceedings are closed. Yeah, I understand okay. why because I am asking this question specifically. But for the first time, department has came up with a new view. 
No, I, I, have they given the uh, or means in the addendum yes. as an addendum to the order? Yes. Why? No, no, to the show cause notice. To the show cause notice. Okay. Because part of a show cause notice addendum. This is an addendum to show cause notice. Yeah, even that's what I'm saying, Ashish. Even if it is an addendum, if it is addendum to show cause notice, and I am ready to pay in tax and tax and interest within thirty days. There is no the proceedings are closed. No, whatever penalty may be levied in uh, the notice. That's what I'm reading it as. Whatever penalty they may levy. The whole next proceedings are closed. Vine, next week when you go to Nasin, you will read new. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> when we sit with the department, they read act in a very different fashion. Yes, yes. Okay. My my first experience with Nasin. <laughs> next next week. So, luckily, when we are at Nasin, uh, they are very fair. Uh, they are uh, again role change. We are yeah. uh, faculty and they are students. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you, Vine. But my, thank you, Ashish. <laughs> yeah, please. You are telling something. Another. My topic is nothing with related to this. My topic with is with respect. No, luckily, financial. they are not calling chartered accountants yeah, for GST. They that. are calling chartered accountants only for financial statements, tally, saw, saw. and Excel. <laughs> I saw. I saw. The all other legal formalities or whatever the audit has to be done, how it is to be done. Again, that is left to the offices. Their own. Their own offices. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Vinay Gandhi Garu, for excellent deliberation. Sir, 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 sir. Ah, yeah. Sir, uh, recently we have got one message from the GST department, uh, like uh, empanelling the auditors for the GST SMEs. Yes. Uh, I think all our uh, members have received such kind of messages. Yes, yes. Sir, uh, in this case, what is the stand of the institute? So, uh, does the institute encourage uh, to participate in this type of uh, offers? Because if I accept the appointment, right, uh, so it amounts to like uh, um, qualifying the work of the fellow charter company. Right. If I take up the assignment and I um, bring the deviations to notice of the GST authorities so by whom uh, I have been appointed, so I will be penalizing my colleague member. Mm. Sir, sir, that is actually that empanelment is for special audit, yes. only for special audit. Accept the special audit because. The opportunity we have lost the opportunity of GST audit. So the department itself, uh, like, uh, uh, has waived the GST audit. Right? So our mm -hmm. opportunities we have lost our opportunities, and we have been given another opportunity to point out the deficiencies uh, in the GST returns or GST statements compiled by our fraternity members. Mm -hmm. Sir, I I don't feel any wrong in that because. GSTR 9C, which we already filed it previously mm -hmm. also, previous 1718 to, to 2021, or at least 1920, where we have given a certificate. We have done that, but, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, we uh, have found see, one, minute, sir, one minute, sir. Uh, the, the issue here is that in case of tax audit, so we do the tax audit and submit the tax audit board. Does the income tax department engage a child accountant to review, to view, to review the comments in the tax audit report. If I am given the opportunity to review the tax audit of, of uh, tax audit report given by a chartered accountant, I will find out n number of uh, uh, defects in the return. Right. If, yes, if, even I, if I am given I that opportunity, exactly. I will not accept. But there is a special audit even for income tax. That, that is different, sir. That is different. That, that is nothing to do with the, that is nothing to do with the uh, tax audit report. Hmm. So even now, so what, what I what I uh, what I uh, uh, recommend or uh, request the management committee of Vishakhapatnam chapter and the council members is to really look into this aspect whether it amounts to like uh, uh, bringing our fraternity members into trouble. 
Uh, you, you, we need not feel anything, sir. Whatever role you have to play, you have to play that role. <laughs> because peer review is coming. If you no, no, we are helping, we are helping the GST department, which has asked us. See, Baskar. Sir, yeah. Peer review yeah, is I coming. Am not commenting. So even in the GST special audit. I am not going to comment on the work of or on the work of some other chartered accountant. I am going to verify whether the uh, GST law or act or provisions of the GST act is being implemented or not. Because as, as uh, Changar is mentioning, even in peer review, the same thing happens, right? Whether I have all the accounting standards or auditing standards have been followed or not. That is what I'm going to check with my fellow chart accountant. In case of peer review, it is uh, statutorily like uh, uh, we, we are bound to undergo that process, right? Uh, yes. The, uh, yes. Peer review. That's what I'm saying, sir. See, I understand that peer review is different, but in the case of the special audit, what I feel is I am not commenting on the work of some other chartered accountant. I am doing or means I actually speaking, I did not apply for that. But actually what I feel is uh, uh, we are going to do an audit of some other corporate for which a special audit is ordered by the commissioner. And uh, I am not going to comment on the books of accounts or uh, audit that has happened. I am going to comment on the GST purview or GST uh, points on that. I don't find any wrong in that. That's what I'm feeling. No, no, ultimately, once once you come out with a deviation report or once you uh, bring out your uh, observations through your department, uh, sir, the GST department will definitely uh, uh, like uh, take actions against the child accountant. He has given the statute audit report. Mm. So ultimately, ultimately, the child accountant who has done the statute audit will be uh, affected. Sir, the department itself has like uh, taken away uh, our opportunity. So why shall we uh, support the department in that aspect? When the department itself has waived the uh, GST audit, why shall we publish the uh, offer given by the GST department? A small, uh, this one, uh, I request the management committee and the council members uh, sir baskar gari you can take up sir there is no problem that <laughs> is what whatever role you have to play you have to play that sir uh, okay. and nothing is going to happen because our people are going for uh, other see for bank they are preparing the balance sheets and uh, everything mm -hmm. and again we are going for audit is exactly. it not if other if you see the balance sheets Every balance is every chartered account will be there. That is, uh, it is common, sir. Baskar Okay. We have to, because whatever uh, Vinay says, that is correct. As per DST Act, and whether the GST to be collected or not, whether penalty is collected or not, that we have to check and you have to comment. That's all. We are not going to comment anything. No problem, sir. Very good. Members, any other questions are there? So, Vinay Gandhi Garu, Apat Bandhala Kapa Dera Mamali Rozu. So, thank you very much for your. Uh, you, Without preparedness, that immediately that you have come to our issue, really you are great, sir. That's because that's the reason why I did not include any case no, no, or something but, because I could not have time. Don't have time. No, no, for the same subject, for the same topic, without giving any time, and whether you are dressed or not, also we are not uh, testing, Nako. <laughs> so really <laughs> wonderful. So I, I hope that I passed the test. <laughs> You have done excellently well, and uh, now uh, I request our uh, secretary, sir, Anirban Paul, sir, to propose vote of thanks. Uh, good evening, dear members. 
before I uh, present the vote of thanks, I'd like to say a few words to our uh, learned speaker, Sri Vinayagandhi Garu. Uh, it is not a matter of, you know, you are passing or not passing. It's a matter of privilege for the branch that we have members like you in the branch who come to our rescue in the times of need. And we are really grateful to you that you've, you know, rescued the session for us. And uh, there is no other way of expressing our thanks uh, to you for uh, having picked up such a difficult topic. It's not an easy topic about the procedural aspects of GST. It's a matter of, you know, uh, a lot of disputes and agitations. So therefore, uh, handling such a topic definitely needs a lot of preparation. And uh, we are so grateful to you that you've been able to handle it so well. And uh, I think uh, the the affinity that we have with our own members like you is that, you know, the, the session becomes so live that uh, people are free to ask whatever the questions that they have without any hesitance. So um, with that note, I would like to thank you on my personal behalf and on behalf of the Managing Committee as well as the branch of Vishakhapatnam uh, of SIRC of ICAI uh, for having spared your time and for having rescued us uh, for this uh, event. And uh, we would certainly like to have you with us for more and more sessions in the future. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, sir. Remember tomorrow, the advanced ruling section is there tomorrow by the same timing because the uh, section 95 to 106. That please note this uh, so tomorrow's date, sir. Remember, please.